There is no doubt that social media can be such a powerful way to connect with our ideal audience and to create a community online. But so often, I think most of us sit around thinking, what in the world do I even post to social media? And it can sometimes seem like everyone else has it figured out. And then when we go to post, ideas are not there. We just come up with a complete blank. What does anyone want to hear from me? What do my readers really want to see? How do I get a plan in place that helps me brainstorm social media ideas so I'm not constantly just throwing spaghetti at the wall. So if this is you and you want to be successful on social media, but you have trouble brainstorming the right kinds of ideas or knowing what to post, then I have a great video for you today because I'm going to give you a very clear and simple method to brainstorm tons of social media content in a small amount of time. So let's get started. Mm. I'm so excited for today because I have created for you a template that will help you just take a look at the different topics and plug in your own ideas. It's basically a brainstorming tool and I'm giving it to you for free. So you can either watch what I'm doing today and recreate it on your own, or you can grab my free template that will give you some extra ideas and will already all be set up for you when you sign up for my newsletter. The link is down in the description. Or if you're already on my Heart Breathings newsletter list, it is now in your inbox because I sent it to you in email today and it's in the Heart Breathings Resource Library. So let me talk you through how to make the decisions to start filling out this very powerful social media brainstorming tool. Okay, so to use this awesome brainstorming tool that I'm going to give you today, there are a couple of decisions that we need to make first. And the first one is deciding on your content pillars. So content pillars, they're sometimes called content buckets. These are basically just topics that your ideal audience is interested in seeing from you. And I know that it sounds like, oh my gosh, what if they're not interested in seeing anything from me? But I promise you that you have a unique voice and you have things that your ideal readers or your ideal audience really wants to connect with. So how do we decide these content buckets? The first thing that I encourage you to do is if you have your own following already and you've already been posting to social media, go and use your previous data. Even if you only have 50 followers or something like that, you still have posts that have one, two, 10, 15 likes or more. So go back through your last 30 days of posts or your last three months of posts and see which posts have gotten the most engagement, the most comments, the most shares, the most likes. Maybe it's every single time I post about how happy I am and how much I love writing everyone comments or every single time I post about what books I'm reading, people comment, pay attention to that and write it down because that might be one of your best potential content pillars or buckets. If you don't have a lot of data from your own social media or you're brand new to social media, or you're just looking for other ideas, another great way to figure out popular content pillars is to actually figure out who your comp authors are. Now we talk about your ideal reader avatar and your comp authors in detail in my Publish and Thrive course. So if you're interested in that, it will be running again in February. So make sure you're on my list to get those details. But basically your comp authors are a group of authors who you would compare yourself to. You would like to emulate their career or you know you're writing books in a similar niche or a similar genre. You like their vibe, you like their style, and you feel like the readers who love their books would absolutely love your book. So it's that crossover of like, I know people who love Pretty Little Liars and The Vampire Diaries and Twilight are going to love my Shadow Demon Saga. And so think about what other authors are writing books similar to yours or that will appeal to a similar audience. Make a list of five to 10 of those authors and then go through their social media posts with a fine tooth comb. What are the ones that are getting the most views, the most content, the most comments, the most likes? What are the ones that are just blowing up on social media or people are most interested in seeing? Take advice from that and then take the data from that and then start to figure out what are these content buckets? What are these topic categories that consistently get good results? And then start experimenting with that in your own content. Also, as you begin to think about these content buckets or umbrellas or pillars or however you want to think about it, these topics that you're going to talk about, I want you to really think about your ideal reader. 
your ideal customer, the ideal audience that's going to be following you, your ideal community. Who is that ideal person? And the more that you can actually imagine them, like give them a name, talk about where they live and what they care about, what they like, what type of books they read, what type of movies they watch, and you can get really detailed about who they are, the easier it's going to be to figure out, okay, would Sally like this type of content for me? And you are sort of playing a guessing game, but it also will help direct your focus. So think about what does that person like? What do they dislike? What catches their attention? What resonates with them? What do they care about? What do they want to see from their favorite authors? And see if that helps you brainstorm some topics. Just as a few examples of content pillars, I'm going to put them up on the screen for you here. So one would be my why. This is why did I start writing in the first place? Why do I love this particular genre? Why am I so in love with the process of writing? But basically just talking about yourself and how you became an author and why you're doing this, why you're writing books. Another one might be your actual books. And for most authors, this probably should be one of your content pillars. So this is your current books that you're writing, your work in progress. It's also your backlist books. Could be inspiration. So you might be trying to inspire your readers in some way. This could tie back to the themes and values of your book. It could be behind the scenes or your writing process out at a coffee shop. What kind of keyboard do you use? How do you plot your books or do you pants them? Could be community, which is one of my pillars. How do I get people to engage with each other and feel like they're part of something greater? It could be something genre specific. So for example, I write witchy books. So I might put in my content pillars, things like crystals or moon rituals or tarot reading, something like that. If you're an adventure author, you might talk about hiking or being in the Grand Canyon or other adventures that people might take in real life. If you're writing police procedurals, you might discuss different laws or different true crime or other things that are genre specific. You also might use book recommendations and reviews. Now I, Put a caveat here that most of the time when you're giving reviews of other people's work, you want to make sure that you're only including books that you really enjoyed because you don't want to be an author who trashes a fellow author. So try to always keep it positive and give readers examples of other books that you're reading that you think they're also going to enjoy. You might also want to cover writing advice. So this writing advice is usually going to appeal more to writers than it will to readers, but you will see a lot of authors giving writing advice because a lot of readers want to be writers or they already are writers. And of course, writers are readers as well. So these are just a few examples of the types of content pillars that you might want to use. And I have all of these examples listed for you in the spreadsheet that I'm going to give you today. This is the first decision that you're going to need to make to fill out this brainstorming tool. What are your three to five content pillars or topics or buckets that you want to discuss regularly on your social media. Okay, the second part of this so helpful strategy for brainstorming your content is not just the content pillars, which is what you say. This is your caption or the text that goes into your caption or what you're saying. You also have on social media these days, almost always a visual component. So you'll have a photo and then that photo has a caption. Your caption is your content pillar, but your photo is a separate category. This is known as your visual topics. I was introduced to this concept of separating out your content pillars, your caption and the text that you're putting on social media, like the post itself with the visuals, the video, the images, and what people are actually seeing with their eyes. So you've got reading and then you have the visual. And I had never thought about separating the two and using them as brainstorming tools until I took a webinar from Jasmine Starr, who is incredible. I will link her YouTube channel and her social media down below for you. She also has a membership called Social Curator, which I'm a part of. But this idea of having visual topics that are separate from your content pillars was just mind blowing for me because this is often really the way that social media works is we may have a photo of our coffee mug, but in the caption, we're not saying, wow, isn't this such a cute coffee mug? That doesn't really engage readers. But if I said, oh my gosh, I can't live without my favorite morning coffee. And you know what I love to do when I'm 
grabbing my coffee. I love to sit down and read. And the books that I've been reading lately are such and such. Or who here loves to drink coffee just as much as I do? It gives you an opportunity to have one part that is visual and the other part that is going to engage people through what you're actually saying. And once you start to separate those as two different things that you have content pillars, that's what you say, and then you have visual topics, which is what you show, it's going to open up so many ideas and it's just going to give you a framework for brainstorming. So how do you decide your visual topics? Well, it's going to be exactly the same process that we just went through with your content pillars. And you might actually find in this process that you put stuff that's more of a visual topic than um, a content pillar and you might end up sort of switching these around. So for example, if you put my pet or my dog as a content pillar, you might actually find that you don't talk a lot about your dog. You just like to show pictures of your dog. And in the ca caption of your pictures of your dog, you're talking about your values or your life or you're inspiring people or giving them humor. So humor would be the content pillar, your dog would be the visual topic. So if you have any questions on that, put those down below. But basically what you need to do is come up with, again, between three and five visual topics that you often post in your social media or that you feel people connect with often. For a lot of authors, this is going to be you, your face. It might also be your actual books or your bookshelf. It's usually going to involve something about your teasers or your work in progress, like quotes or teaser images. Sometimes it can be memes. So I'm going to give you an entire list of potential visual topics that you might use as an author. So I'm going to put these up on the screen, but don't forget they're going to be in your free spreadsheet as well. So it could be hard covers or paperbacks or Kindle editions of your book cover. You could share photos of your characters, teasers of your book, swag, fashion. Your computer or laptop might be a visual topic. Your bookshelf, your desk, stacks of notebooks or your other planning and stationary supplies. You, meaning your face or you sitting at your desk or in your office your family, nature, flowers, these kind of things, coffee or coffee mugs, your pets, memes or quotes. This is really just the tip of the iceberg. You could brainstorm and it could be anything. One of my visual topics is actually Hello Kitty. So it could be Disney, it could be a fandom that you love, but it's really anything that shows off your personality, that attracts your ideal reader visually, or it's just something that is, is a, aesthetic for you to look at. But for example, I might have a picture of me holding up my coffee mug. That is the visual topic is me or coffee, coffee mugs, if you collect them, something like that. But my caption, which is my content pillar, isn't going to be about me and coffee. <laughs> the caption might be an inspirational post about why I got up this morning to get my writing done. So that's how you begin to pair the visual with the caption or the content pillar. So what we're going to do next, once you have decided on your content pillars and your visual topics, is I'm going to show you how to brainstorm mixing and matching them so that you can come up with dozens of social media ideas very quickly. So let's go to my screen. This is the fun part. Here is your social media brainstorming template that hopefully is going to revolutionize things for you in terms of your brainstorming, just like it has for me. So it's pretty simple. I have two different tabs here on the bottom. The first one is your actual content brainstorm that you can copy and fill out as often as you want. And then you also have these same ideas. So I gave you these content pillar examples for authors, the visual topics for authors, and then we have example content types. So what I'm talking about here is what type of content are you creating? Are you creating a video? Is it long form or short form? Is it a reel, a short or a TikTok, which you can often repurpose? Is it a carousel post where like on Instagram or Facebook, you have multiple images that people can scroll through? Is it just one static photo or is it text only like a caption only and there's no photo involved? So you'll use that and then also deciding your own content pillars. Once you have decided which three to five content pillars and three to five visual topics you're going to use, 
use, you're going to start to plug that in on this spreadsheet. So all of your content pillars will go here on the left where it's blue. And of course, you can just come up here to this little fill color and you can change it to your own brand. And in fact, you can even say custom color and you can put your exact colors in here. And I'll show you how I did that in a minute. And then you're going to just say, what's your content pillar number one? These don't necessarily have to go in any kind of order, but you might want to put the one that you use the most. So your, your number one content pillar would go here. So if it is something along the lines of my books, like what I'm my work in progress and my backlist, you might put that here then you would put your second content pillar and third and fourth and fifth. And if you need another one, you can just copy this and paste it down to give yourself a sixth. Or if you're not using some of these, you can just select these rows and delete them. Then across the top, we have our visual topics. So you have visual topic number one, Remember, the visual topic is different from your content pillar in that your content pillar is the actual text or what you're saying. The visual topic is what you're showing, what people see, the actual image or video that they see on the screen. So visual topic number one might be you my face, whatever it is. Visual topic number two might also be your books, but we're talking about images of your books. Visual topic number three might be your desk or stationary and so on. And so you just put those topics in here. And then what we're going to do is you'll see that now it has created this grid and we're just going to mix and match and marry these to give yourself pretty much unlimited content ideas. So let me show you what this looks like on my own little branded <laughs> spreadsheet here. So I have, as you can see, I put my little logo here in the corner. I have two brands. So I have my Sarah Cannon author brand, and then I have the brand of the video that you're watching right now, which is my author coaching brand called Heart Breathing. So I have a tab for each one of those brands, and they both have their own visual topics across the top and content pillars along the side. So let's just go over those. So the content buckets or topics that I most commonly talk about in my captions are the about me or why I love and started writing, like why writing is important to me. My work in progress, which right now is called The Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw. I currently love, so this is what I'm currently reading, watching, or playing. I don't actually uh, indulge in this content bucket as often on my Instagram as I do in my Facebook group. So you might also find that certain platforms get certain types of content where others don't. For example, on TikTok, you might want to be a lot more niched in. Like you may only have one content pillar that you use on TikTok, whereas on Instagram, you have five. So that could be something that you could separate out as well. Another one for me is inspiration and encouragement. And then backlist is another one. So not just my work in progress, but my backlist books. Now you could just put those in one content pillar and just say my books, but I like to keep them separate. So I remember to talk about both. And then I also have added a sixth content pillar, which is community, because this is one of my most important just reasons for being an author. So those are my content pillars or my topics. My visual topics are me and my family. So my kids or me and my husband, my office or desk on Sarah Cannon, it's often this keyboard in front of me uh, or my desk, or even sometimes here in my office, I have my plotting wall. Quotes, so this could be teasers or other things. Coffee shop, so I am often out at coffee shops writing, so I include that in my visuals. Um, Hello Kitty, because she is my bae. I love Hello Kitty. I have her all over my offices, all over everywhere. And you don't have to include something kind of fun like this. But for me, I write young adult fiction, so it fits my brand. I also like to post things that are just sort of fun and youthful. And Hello Kitty is often just part of my desk and decor. So Hello Kitty is one of my content visual topics. Then memes is another one. So again, I have six instead of just five. You could also just have two or three if you want. So memes would be, of course, things that are, you know what memes are. So I don't have to cover that. Um, but basically, these are my six content buckets and visual topics. When I want to brainstorm any content, I can just come in here and I can take one here and one here, which brings me to this little corner right here. And I can just start adding in my ideas. So I could say, okay, if I take a visual topic of me 
and I'm talking about my why, then I could say the content type here is going to be a reel. And the platform I'm going to do is Instagram and I'm going to put it in my Facebook group and maybe I'll put it on YouTube shorts also. So when it comes to the visual, I'm going to be relying on the type of content along with this visual content bucket. So I'm going to want to, since I'm making a reel, either take a series of photos that I can put to music, or I want to take a short video that is of me and my family or me, and I'm gonna talk about my why. So the visual component would be a video of me, let's say typing on my keyboard. The caption is going to be this part of the equation, the content bucket here on the left. And I'm going to be creating a caption that is specifically about me or about my why. So I might decide this is going to be an introduction post. So I take a video of me typing on my keyboard and the caption will say, hi readers, I'm Sarah. I thought it was about time to introduce myself. And then of course I would come in here and I would actually put anything I wanted to use to introduce myself, but I could fill out this entire caption and I could say like, here's a little bit about me. These are the kind of books that I write and here's why I wanted to be a writer in the first place. And what this is going to do is this is going to visually connect people with me, my face, me typing on my computer and a piece of content about me that I think that they'll be interested in as my ideal readers, which is here's why I started writing in the first place. Then if I want to sit down and come up with another content idea, I can still take this content bucket about me and why I love to write and combine it with a visual of my office or my desk. So I could come out here and say this content type is going to be a carousel. And the platform is going to be Instagram and I'm going to post it to my Facebook page. The visual is going to be four photos of my office. And I could, if I wanted to get more specific about this, instead of just the brainstorming phase, I could actually list what those four photos are going to be for planning purposes. But then the caption could also be about if I'm going to talk about about me or why I love writing, I could tell a little story here about when I first fell in love with being a writer. So even though the visual topic is my office, which is going to appeal to my ideal reader, the content and the connection is going to be found in the caption where I tell them about as a little girl, I used to dream of having an office like this. And I always wanted to be a writer. And part of why I wanted to be a writer was because I didn't fit in with the popular girls. And so I ended up spending a lot of my time in the woods reading books. Like I could tell that story. Um, so the caption could be my story of growing up isolated and reading all the time wishing and praying for an office like this and being a writer. So when you're brainstorming, you don't have to actually list all the details of stuff, but if you take 15, 20, 30 minutes, or even an hour, and you just start combining your content pillar with your visual topic, it's going to be a framework to start brainstorming what in the world you could put on here. And you can basically pair all of these. And once you have six visual topics times six different content buckets, you've got 36 potential posts for the month and beyond that you could go and post right now. So this for me has been game changer. So one of the reasons that this can be so helpful, not only is it going to help you brainstorm stuff without having to just sit alone in your room thinking, what in the world am I going to post? But it's also going to help your brand have consistency because people are going to see your office or your desk over and over again, which gives it that same kind of color or type of photo over and over again. And it's going to make you recognizable. It's going to give you personality. It's going to give you consistency. It's going to let people know what your values are. And it's really going to endear them to you because you're talking about things that you know they're interested in. And then you're showing them things that you also know they're interested in. When you combine those two things, it's super, super powerful for social media engagement and growth. So let's go down to another one. So as you can see, we could do this about me with all of these quotes, coffee shops, Hello Kitty. And what was my last one was my memes. So let's go down here and we could say, okay, let's talk about something that's going to be for my backlist and have a 
picture of me, some kind of visual of me. So let's say here, we're going to make a content type that's just a standalone photo. And I'm going to post it to my Facebook page and my Instagram. And the visual would just be a photo of me because the content topic is me with my kids reading a book, right? One of my books, <laughs> reading a SDS book, we'll say Shadow Demons book. So the caption here might tell a story that engages people with my backlist books because it's telling them something about me. And so here it might say, in 2010, when I first published Beautiful Demons, which is my backlist book, my very first book, I had no idea what my life would be like now. And I could post a story here about that type of writer that I was and why that book meant so much to me and how much more it means to me now I have kids. Like that's just one example, but you could create endless amounts of content combining your backlist with a photo of you or your backlist with a photo of your desk or your backlist with a quote, right? So you could say if you said backlist and quote here, sorry, let me make it a little bit easier to see everything. <laughs> see if I can make this smaller. Okay, just in the interest of being able to see both at the same time, if I wanted to brainstorm backlist as a content pillar and a quote as the image, I could say content type and we could say real or whatever. I'm going to post this, let's say to Instagram and my visual is going to be a quote, right? So let's say I'm going to do a background of my book cover enlarged with a uh, shadow demons quote floating on the top of it or scrolling over the top, right? So I would go into Canva and I would create this background or backdrop with my cover art. And I would put one of the most highlighted quotes. You can go onto Kindle and you can see what's the most highlighted or one of your favorite quotes and put that over the top. Or you could talk about the tropes or something like that. And then in the caption, you would talk about your content pillar, which is your backlist. So you would say something along the lines of, uh, you, could, you could repeat the quote, and then you could say beautiful demons is perfect for fans of such and such. And it's, you could put the something here about um, how it's the beginning of a series, or here's the types of people that would really love this book. And you could really talk about why they should read the first book in your series. And so hopefully you can start to see like, if I went through and I combined all of these, my work in progress combined with a quote, which could be a teaser for my work in progress, my work in progress combined with a visual of the coffee shop would be me working out at a coffee shop and talking about the book that I'm writing. Hello Kitty would be something along the lines. It's like, how do you combine Hello Kitty with your work in progress? Well, what I could do is I could have a bunch of Hello Kitties sitting on my desk and I could talk about how as I'm working on the disappearance of Vanessa Shaw, I'm using my Hello Kitty pens or something something like that. And I could have that as the visual, but the caption is about how I'm working on my book. And you could take all of these content ideas and begin to fill this entire grid out. And you would have over a month's worth of social media post ideas in just a matter of minutes. Now in my heart breathings, just to give you an example of a different type here, my content pillars for heart breathings, my topics that I talk about, there's five about me and my why, like why am I a writer? Why am I helping fellow authors? My writing process, I talk about productivity. I talk about inspiration and encouragement, which really, if I narrow this down, I talk a lot about joy in the process, like how to maintain your joy as a writer. And then I also give writing tips and advice, which also is kind of like self-publishing advice more so than just writing but it's really any of those kind of things can fall under that same bucket. My visual pillars are me and my family. Again, my office, which can be my shelves and my desk, not this office, but the one I was in at the beginning of the video, my stationery. So I have stacks of notebooks and I have my pins and my washi tape and things like that. Coffee or um, mugs are often in my visuals. So I, for example, if I'm talking about my writing process and I want to use a visual of coffee, I might come here and say, my content type is going to be a reel. My platform is going to be Instagram. And my visual is going to be me making my morning coffee. 
And in the caption, I'm going to talk about my writing process. I'm not going to talk about the coffee. I might have one little line in there about the coffee, but I'm going to talk about my writing process and I'm going to combine this visual topic with my actual content pillar. So I might say something like, I can't get started or I've, I've been uh, making it a point lately to start writing first thing in the morning. So you can see how people will naturally combine that with the idea of having coffee because we often make our coffee first thing in the morning. But what I'm really talking about is my writing process, this idea of sitting down and being consistent. And sometimes you're going to find that pillars begin to mesh with each other. And when you can touch on multiple pillars, that's great. So for example, I might have me making my morning coffee and then also sitting down with a notebook and I can talk about my writing process, but also add in something inspirational here about how I've been creating this new morning routine and it's helping me get so many more words, which is naturally going to inspire other people to sit down, make their great, you know, morning changes or whatever, so that they can sit down and have a dedicated writing time too. So you'll find that these begin to mesh, but it can be so helpful just to have this grid, make these choices and then start mixing and matching them. So let me know in the comments if you feel like this is going to be super helpful for you. So I have given you this starter spreadsheet, you can just go to file and click make a copy to make a copy for your own that you can edit and change. Or you can go to download and you can download it as an Excel spreadsheet or even as a PDF if you want to, so that you can fill this out for yourself and you can change it and add your own topics and your own logo and your own colors and anything you may want to do with it. If you can combine this with trending audio and sounds that you find on TikTok or YouTube shorts or on Instagram, then you've really got your system in place. So be sure that when you're doing your own scrolling and you're looking at comparing not only just authors in your genre, but also just people you enjoy watching, think about these content pillars and how you can save trending sounds, trending sort of combinations of things and fit it into your own content pillars and visual topics. I hope this has been super helpful. Again, go to that link down below, sign up for my newsletter and grab this free template for yourself or just use these ideas to create your own template. And if you want to integrate this with your Notion calendar, go back to last week's video on how to create your social media templates in Notion and you can start adding them into those cards and just dragging and dropping your ideas to schedule them out on your calendar. Also, if you are interested in organizing your social media, your email, all of the hats that you wear as an author or entrepreneur or whatever it is that your goals are and you are looking for some help of how to get it all done because there just never seems to be enough time, I hope that you'll consider coming to join us in the HB90 Bootcamp, which is live right now. We start on September 10th, so you have until then at noon Eastern time to join us. It is a game changer when you start to really manage your time in a way that promotes ease and excitement in your life. It's going to be a way to build positive momentum instead of constantly hustling or feeling like you don't have any control over your time. This course has been life-changing for thousands of people, and I would love to have you as part of that community. So find those links down below. Come join us in the boot camp. And again, if you're interested in my Publish and Thrive self-publishing class, where we do talk more about social media and ideal customers and content pillars and things like this, I hope that you will get on my newsletter list so you'll be notified when registration opens for that next January. Our double down day is coming up this Saturday. So if you want to write <laughs> like the wind and join us for some writing sprints over on YouTube and in our Facebook group, I will put information for the Heart Breathings writing community down below and we will be sprinting all day on Saturday. So I hope to see you there. Please make sure you're subscribed. And if you know other author friends who are struggling to get their social media brainstorming game on, I hope that you'll share this video with them. Like and subscribe and I I will see you all in my next video. Bye.